Hello and welcome to another training video on using LEAP, the low emissions analysis platform. My name is Charlie Heaps and I'm the developer of LEAP. Before we get started with this training video, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to the LEAP YouTube channel. The address is up there on the screen, leap.sei.org slash YouTube. And there you can find many videos showing you how to use LEAP. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to look at four different techniques for importing and exporting data from LEAP. First of all, we'll look at the most basic ways of importing and exporting using the copy and paste features in LEAP. Next, we'll look at importing and exporting larger data sets using a template spreadsheet. Thirdly, we'll look at how we can create branches and import data all together in a single process from a structured spreadsheet. And lastly, we'll look at importing branches and data from another LEAP area, that is merging two different LEAP areas. So let's get started by looking at basic importing and exporting using the copy and paste functions in LEAP. I'm going to switch now to look at a screen that has both Excel and LEAP open on my PC, and we'll do the example from there. So here we are looking at my PC and you can see I've arranged it so that we have LEAP on the left and Excel on the right. So let's just start with some very simple examples where we're going to copy and paste some values. So I've already prepared a few sample values over here in Excel. And to put one of those values into LEAP, you can simply go to Excel, copy the value, go to LEAP and paste the value. It's as simple as that. However, there's a couple of things to be careful of. One is you need to make sure that the values in Excel are not formatted with a comma in them. I've got one down here that is formatted with a comma to show the thousand separator. It might be different if you're using a different language uh, setting on your computer. But in this case, I've got a comma representing thousands. If I copy that and I place it into leap, let me just delete that. When I press enter, you'll see that I get an error message in valid expression. So Leap doesn't like to see the thousand separator values in there. I can edit it out. So just be careful of that. When you're formatting your numbers in Leap, don't include the thousand separators. So the second thing you might want to do is import time series of values into Leap. So here's some examples of that in Excel. Here I've got a, some time series values. You can see I've got values going from 1970 all the way down to 2020. And I can import those into Leap as well. My, my Leap data set on the left is actually set up. If we have a quick look at settings, you can see it's this particular data set is set up so that the base year is 2000 and the first scenario year is 2020. But I can still import all of these time series values into Leap directly using copy and paste. So what I'm going to do is just mark that area there. So I've marked all the values from 1970 up to 2020. I can just copy them again, just control C I like to do. And then come back into Leap and use and hit paste or control V. And you can see Leap is smart enough to uh, realize that you wanted to treat this as a column of years and a column of values. And it takes those and it formats them as an interp function with, within Leap. If we look at the Builder tab down here, you can see the full set of values down here. And notice also that even though it's importing all the values from 1970 up to 2020, when we look on the chart, it's only going to plot those values from 2000 up to 2020. That's because of the settings that we just set up in Leap. So Leap is just ignoring any of the values before the year 2000. And we can do the same thing if the values are arranged in rows. So if we look over here on this spreadsheet, here you can see a set of values that's with the years in the first row and the values in the second row. So we can do the same thing. We can copy that. We can delete this one and we can paste those numbers down there and leap treats them the same. So it also imports that and turns it into an interp function. So now let's look at a slightly more realistic example. So imagine we have a data set here where we've got subsectors within the manufacturing sector and we want to import 
the activity level data for each of those subsectors. So here under manufacturing, we've got iron and steel, chemicals, non-ferrous metals, et cetera, et cetera. And the data we want to import is the, the dollars of value added of each of those activities. So you may be able to find that data in some national statistics you might have available. So here's some sample data, something like that in Excel. So here we've got a table where the, the years are the columns and then the rows are the value added data. So the first thing I want to do is import the iron and steel data. So I'm just going to mark both the years and the values. And you can see if I go all the way up here, it goes up to 2017. So I can copy all of that data and just come down here and hit paste. So notice that I copied both the years and the values. Now for the chemicals and petrochemicals, I want to do the same thing, but obviously it's a bit tricky to mark both the years and the values together in Excel. It's difficult to select two separate ranges within Excel. So what you can do in Leap is just select just the values the second time. So here I'm just gonna mark all these values up to 2017. I'm gonna copy it. And then when I paste, watch what happens. So here I'm gonna hit Control V to paste what I just copied in Excel. And you can see it assumes that those yearly values are for the same years. So the reason it's doing that is because it noticed that the dimensions were exactly the same. There was the same number of entries. So it just assumes that you're using the same years as last time you copied and pasted. So we could continue doing that across all of these rows. So let's do the one for non-ferrous metals. It's putting it in. Now, if we look at the next row, you'll see for non-metallic minerals, you'll see that there's a few values missing. So maybe that was years when values weren't available, but we can still do the same thing. We can copy that whole range. And when I paste, what Leap will do is it just won't put in values for those years. So notice here, 1972 and 1973 are blank. And if we look at the builder down here, you can see there are no values for 1972 and 1973. So a nice property of, of the interp function in Leap is that it will simply draw a straight line interpolation between the values that you do have. For so between 1971 and 1974, it interpolates to estimate what the values would have been in 1972 and 1973, uh, assuming a straight line interpolation, which is a, a pretty reasonable assumption. So you can see this is a pretty efficient way of importing data into Leap. You can simply mark a range of time series data, copy it in Excel, then go to Leap and paste it. However, sometimes you might actually want to have the data in Leap be kept up to date as you make changes in Excel. So you actually want to create a link between the Excel spreadsheet and Leap. Uh, this previous method we've shown is only a one-time import. So if you change anything in Excel, it won't be reflected in Leap. But it is possible also to create a link between Excel and Leap. So let me show you how to do that. So here I'm gonna come back to my iron and steel sector. And here I'm gonna mark both the years and the values again. So I'm gonna select um, a range that is two rows high. I'm gonna copy that. And then back here, let's delete this old one. Instead of just pasting, I'm gonna to go to the edit menu and, and use the paste link to Excel option. And you can see it's pasted uh, a more complex function. So instead, of the, it's still an interp function, but instead of putting the numbers within the function, it's put in a reference to the spreadsheet. Let's look at that in the builder down here. So you can see, it's interpolating, it's got two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the spreadsheet, and the second parameter is the range that you're pointing to. So it's pointing to B4 to AW5. So that's quite a useful way of, of creating a link between uh, Excel and Leap. And let me just show you what happens if some of the numbers actually change in Leap. So in this iron and steel sector, let's edit this number here, maybe this very final value for 2017. Instead of using the value 2000, let's make this 5000. Now, as soon as we save that in Excel, if we just go to another branch and then return to our manufacturing branch, let's go all the way over here to the right. 
you can see that that number's updated in Leap as well. So as soon as the values are saved in Excel, they will be refreshed in Leap. When you're doing subsequent rows, you have to be a bit more careful about how you specify the parameters in the inter function. So Leap lets you specify two parameters. Instead of specifying one range that contains both the years and the values, it lets you specify two parameters. So one, the first parameter is the range containing the years, and the second parameter is the range containing the values. So here, for example, if we wanted to do chemicals, we'd need to tell Leap which range contained the years, that would be this row here, and which contained the values, that would be this row here. So one of the things I've done here in Excel is I've created some range names. So there's one range called years, which mark the actual years, and, and various other range names for each of the different subsectors. So here's the row for the chemicals, here's the row for the non-ferrous metals. So to link to those in Leap, we can simply edit a function like this. I'm going to do this down in the builder. So instead of specifying one parameter there, which contains both the years and the values, I'm going to specify two. So the first parameter is the years, and the second one is the range name containing the values. So for the first one, I think it was called steel. Oh, no, I'm doing chemicals, aren't I? So I think I should call it chem. And we can submit that. And now those values are extracted from this range here for the chemicals. I could do the same for non-ferrous metals. So I could quickly edit each of these. So instead of that being chem, I could call that NFM for non-ferrous metals. So you can see those are just the range names used in Excel. So once you've done that, as you edit this table in Excel, all of these values will automatically get updated in Leap. So let's do one more subsector. So now I'm going to do the other industry sector. But notice down here that my data for other industry is in a different unit. It's in millions of dollars rather than billions of dollars. So when I copy and paste this, I want to transform this data. I'm going to need to divide these values by a thousand so I can put them into Leap where they're measured in billions of dollars. So let's copy the same range again. So I mark the range in Excel. I hit Copy, Control C, then I come over to Leap, and here I'm going to go up to the menu option and select Paste Special. And down here, I'm going to paste the values from 1970 onwards, but I'm going to divide all of those values by a thousand. And then here you can see those numbers. So in 1970, we have 32 billion instead of uh, uh, 32,000 million dollars. In this second example, we're going to look at importing and exporting large amounts of data, making use of template spreadsheet. In this example, we have Leap on the left and an Excel spreadsheet on the right. And my Excel spreadsheet already contains the raw data that I want to move into Leap. You can see it's contained here on this tab. It's basically energy statistics for the United States for the energy balances of every individual state within the United States. And you can see the data for fuel consumption for any given source, which, which basically is a fuel, or any given activity which corresponds to a sector, is contained in the columns on the right for various different years. This is quite an old spreadsheet, so it goes all the way back to 1960 and all the way up to the early 2000s. So that's the data that I want to transfer into Leap. And you can see on the left in Leap, I have data structure already set up. Here, I'm actually going to do a very simple model where for Rhode Island, and I've set it up so that I have very simple historical data for each sector. So you can see here under demand, I have residential, commercial, industrial, and then within each sector, I'm going to import my energy balance data to set up the historical energy statistics of past energy consumption. So I've got a variable over here on the right called total energy, which I want to contain my raw energy statistics. So not my energy intensities, but actual total energy consumption. 
my activity level is population data so I'm going to calculate my energy intensity as basically the total energy consumption for any given fuel divided by the activity level so it's the energy per person for example so what I need to do to, to get working is I need to import my energy consumption statistics into this variable this user-defined variable called total energy that I've already set up so let's have a look on Excel on the right here so you can see I have the raw numbers over here but how do I efficiently get those into these placeholders on the left in leap so the first step in the process is to export the data structure from leap even though it's blank and doesn't contain any data we're going to export it to a spreadsheet in Excel and that spreadsheet in Excel will act as the bridging template between the data that we have in Excel and leap so let's do that so here i'm going to select under the analysis menu i'm going to ex select export to excel i'm going to export to a new sheet in this excel spreadsheet i'm going to export all branches i'm only going to export current accounts because i'm only setting up historical data here i'm only going to export the, the user variable total energy i could export all of the variables but in this case i'm only going to do one and I'm not going to export values, I don't have any yet, um, so I'm going to export it in the form of the expressions within Leap. That's what I'm going to populate and then re-import back into Leap. And I'm going to export all expressions. Everything else I'm just going to leave as the default. Let me hit OK. And you can see it's beginning the export process. And once it's completed on the right, we end up with something looking like this. It's a template spreadsheet in Excel. You can see all the expressions are zeros or blanks. So there's no data in there yet, but it does contain the list of all the branches, variables, scenarios, and regions. In this case, the region is Rhode Island because we're setting up a model for Rhode Island. So our job then is to populate this column here that contains the expressions because you want to bring those back into leap so let's look at how we do that so i'm going to switch over to this eia raw data spreadsheet and this contains all of the raw data that i need so you can see here there's columns corresponding to the state the source which is the fuel and the activity which is the sector so i want to populate for each fuel within each of my sectors uh, residential commercial industrial transport so here's the numbers over here in the columns and you can see there's one column for each year so what we want to do is turn these different columns of data into a single column that represents an expression that we can put back into leap so let's go all the way over here i've already done some of that over here you can see there's many years of data here so it would be a lot of work to have to type this stuff in so you can see what i've done here is i've constructed within excel i've constructed an interp function to hold all of the years of data in this case actually i haven't done every single year i've done in the early years i've only done every fifth year but then later on i think i'm exporting more years of data so you need to write a function in Excel a little bit like this which is, so it's concatenating years and then the values for those years so these functions are basically looking at the values in any given year and it's here I'm rounding it to three decimal places so you could choose to round it to different numbers of decimal places in order to construct a, a nicely formatted interp function over here so that's a little bit of work of obviously to write that concatenate function but you only have to do it once so here i wrote it once for one fuel in one state in one sector and then i just copied that down so it's exactly the same expression going all the way down and this potentially could be a database for you know all, all 50 states of, of the united states okay so that's the interp function that's what's going to go back into leap and then the only thing i need to do after that is i need to connect those expressions in this spreadsheet up to that template spreadsheet so the one i just exported so here for example i need to find the coal consumption for residential so here i need to point this cell here and then i'm going to find the historical coal consumption for rhode island 
in this raw data set here. So over here, I need to find Rhode Island. So the easiest way to do that is, first of all, is to filter this. So if I go to the data tab in Excel, if I filter this, I can say uh, I want to only look at Rhode Island. And maybe I can filter it also so that I only look at the residential sector. So I don't have to look at too many rows given time. So that makes it a lot easier to look at this data. OK, so let me go back and do try that again. So here I need to point this cell to the cell that contains the expression for coal consumption in Rhode Island. So that's this one over here, I think. And you can see I've now I have my first interp function. I could do another one. I could do the natural gas one. So my natural gas is down here. Okay, so you need to do that for each different row so that you're basically defining the data for residential, commercial, industrial, and transport. So to save you having to watch me do that, here's one where I've already completed it across all of the different sectors and fuels. Basically, I'm making the interp functions that I'm going to use in Leap. Now, maybe this is obvious, but an important point is that Excel doesn't understand interp functions. That's just a text field in Excel, but that will be a meaningful way of defining data in Leap once we import it. OK, so once you've done that, you can bring that data back into Leap. So coming back over here on the left to where Leap is, I just need to reverse that previous export function. So I'm going to choose the import from Excel. And I'm going to import as data just leave all of these options as is. I press OK. And at that point, uh, Leap will then try and import from Excel. And it always looks at whatever is the currently open spreadsheet in Excel. So you need to make sure that this one is open. Don't keep another one like that open or else it won't work. So we're going to keep this export finished one open. Let's click OK. It says it will replace anything I've got. So let's say yes. So now it's doing the import function. And boom, you can see it's immediately imported all of the data, not just for residential, but also for commercial, also for industrial, and also for uh, transport. So all of that data has been imported. And you can see that's a huge amount of data. And trying to do that manually would be very slow and would be very prone to making data entry mistakes. So this is a much more reliable way of getting large amounts of data into Leap. And not only that, what you've done at this point is you've also set up a system where your energy balance data is now connected into an importing and exporting system. So that's how to use Leap for importing very large amounts of data from, from spreadsheets. In this next part of the video, we're going to look at a third example of importing data. And in this case, we're going to be looking at importing data from a structured spreadsheet. So this is different from the last example in that it's a methodology designed to help you import data from existing tables of information in Excel. And unlike the previous methodology, this one will actually help you create the branches and import the data into those branches all in one go. So let's take a look at it. So in this example, I'm going to import data for my transformation processes from my different electric power plants from a table in Excel that contains information for different types of power plants. And it contains all of the data for the different variables belonging to the processes in Leap. So you can see an example of that kind of table over here on the right in Excel. You can see the rows of the spreadsheet are the types of different power plants. And then the columns are the different types of variables that I might want to import. So for example, I have data on the capital cost in thousands of dollars per megawatt, the efficiency of the process, the capacity of any processes that might already exist and their historical production in gigawatt hours. I've also got data on variable operating maintenance costs fixed operating maintenance costs, fuel costs, lifetime, and a few other variables as well, such as the availability, the merit order. 
but over here on the right you can see there's also some qualitative data so like what fuels are used by each process and i've also got data here about the tags that i want to associate with dif different processes so here for example you can see that an onshore wind process is tagged as being renewable and the technology type is wind or down here i've got a, a coal-fired power plant which is tagged as being a fossil power plant and st meaning steam turbine and i've also got information about what kind of dispatch rule i want to use in leap so leap has a special technique for importing this kind of tabular data and let me show it to you now so here under the electricity generation module i have my processes and you can see currently in this data set i don't have any processes so what i can do is right click on the processes uh, branch and i can select this option here create update branches from excel and you can see that causes this pop-up dialog to open and Leap's trying to be fairly smart here. It's already realized that there's an Excel spreadsheet open. So it's using that as the, the spreadsheet that it thinks it's going to import from. You could also select another one if I click on the button over here. You can select the spreadsheet that you're interested in. So I'm going to use the import from this sample data, which is this spreadsheet here. And then you can also pick the range to import. So you can type in the range formula from Excel. But I prefer when I'm working in Excel to actually mark the table as a whole range and give it a name. So over here, for example, I've already created a range name called Leap Data. And you can see Leap Data is just the whole of the table, including the header row and then each of the rows which belong to the different processes. So that's the, the data I'm going to import. And you can see that Leap itself is able to see the list of range names defined in the open Excel spreadsheet. Then the final thing you have to mark is whether the data is in rows or in columns. In this case, each branch corresponds to a row in the spreadsheet. So when we do the import process, each row in Excel will be created as a branch in Leap. OK, let's click Next. At this point, it's scanning through the data to try and make sense of what data it thinks it can import. And you can see the results of that here. So it's saying these are the following branches will be added. So there's a list of different branches here. So it's going to create a branch called onshore wind using fuel wind and all of the other processes that are listed up here. And then below that are the list of the variable names in Leap. And it's trying to map the variable names in Leap to the columns of data that it's found in Excel. And it tries to sort through the names of the column names in the header row and assign those to the variables in Leap. So that way it's mapping the different columns in Excel to the variables that you've got in Leap. So you can see it does a pretty good job here. So exogenous capacity, it found one called exogenous capacity. So it's guessed that's the right one already. Sometimes you have to give it a little bit of a helping hand down here, for example, it didn't get the fixed O&M cost. In Leap, it's called fixed O-M cost. In this particular spreadsheet, it was called fixed O and M cost. So I just need to manually choose that column down here. So the closer you can make the names in your spreadsheet uh, match the names of the variables in Leap, the better this will work. Sometimes also the units that are in the data don't correspond to the units used in Leap. So sometimes you need to adjust these. So here, for example, this is thousands of dollars per megawatt, but maybe it was in dollars per megawatt in the spreadsheet. So if necessary, you can enter a factor here that will multiply by the values in the Excel spreadsheet as it's bringing it into Leap. But other than that, I think this is a pretty good match. Sometimes you can see there's missing columns in Excel. So the data that is used in Leap doesn't match a column in Excel. OK, so and all I need to do now is click Finish. And now it's doing the import process. So it's scanning through all the data in Excel. And you can see it's created all these branches down here in Leap. So here, for example, it's created a branch called Onshore Wind with a feedstock fuel called Wind or one called geothermal with a feedstock called geothermal. So it's importing the rows as branches in Leap. And wherever possible, the fuels are used as the feedstock fuels in Leap. 
you can see also that down here, if I click on one of these particular processes, you can see down here at the bottom, it's also created tags for this branch corresponding to the tags that we entered in Excel. So this is quite a useful additional technique when you want to enter data that's already in tabular format, which is quite often uh, the way that you find data. And it's particularly useful, I think, when importing data into the transformation branches in Leap, because they tend to have lots of different variables. Finally, we're going to look at a fourth technique that allows you to import branches and data from another Leap area. This can be a particularly useful technique if you want to merge different data sets that have been created by different members of a team, for example. So let's take a look at how you can do that. So here I have the Fredonia data set. The only difference from the regular Fredonia data set here is that I've deleted the transport sector. So what I'd like to do in this example is import the branches for the transport sector from another leap area that does contain the transport sector. So let me show you how to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the place where I want to import the new branches. So I want to import them underneath the demand branch here. So I'm going to right click on the demand branch and I'm going to select the option to insert branches from another area. So let me do that. That pulls up a dialog like this. And the first thing we need to do is select the area that we're going to import from. So I've got one here called transport analysis. And when I select that, Leap will sort through that transport analysis data set and it will compare it to your current data set. So one of the difficulties in importing from one area to another is that you have to be very careful to make sure that all of the different dimensions of the data are properly mapped together. So, for example, my Fredonia data set might have a scenario called baseline, whereas in my sample data set, I might have something that is a baseline scenario, but is called something slightly different. Similarly, you might have slightly different lists of fuels or different lists of environmental effects or different tags or different user variables. Those can all differ slightly between the two data sets. So when you're doing this import operation, it's really important to make sure those are properly mapped from one to the other. So this screen can help you with that. Here you can see it's listed the scenarios and the fuels and the tags. So those are the three dimensions of data where it's detected that the two data sets have some differences. The other dimensions, for example, user variables and effects, it's been through those and it's realized they're exactly the same. So it's not bothering to ask you about those. So we only have to deal with these three different dimensions. So in this screen, there's different options with how to deal with it. So for example, under scenarios, you can add missing scenarios or you can choose not to import any missing scenarios or you can choose mappings for each scenario. So I'm gonna do that. Similarly, with fuels, you can add missing ones, not import the missing ones, or you can choose mappings. So I'm actually going to do choose mappings for all of these. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. And then the next screen is going to ask me which branch I want to import from the, from the source data set. So I want to import these transport branches. So I'm going to click OK. And now it's going to ask me to go through mapping those different data sets. So here, for example, in my transport data set, it's got a scenario called reference, but I want to map that to the scenario in this data set called baseline. Here I've got a scenario in the transport data set called CNG buses. And that one, let's have a look. There isn't an equivalent one in this data set. So for that one, I want to add it from the source. So it's going to create a new scenario in my new data set called CNG buses. I'm going to click OK. And it's also asking me to go through the fuels. So for the most part, you can see it's trying to map the fuels properly. There's similarly named fuels in each data set. But here, for example, in the source data set, we've one, got one called motor gasoline. We need to choose whether we're adding that from the source or whether we're mapping it to an existing one. And I think in this case, we're gonna map it to one called gasoline. 
and fuel oil, we're going to map to one called residual fuel oil. But, you know, we could add in additional fuels if necessary, but all the other fuels seem to map pretty well. So we're going to leave that as is. And then finally, in terms of tags, there's many tags are exactly the same. But I can see here, I've got some tags. Called, I've got one tag called passenger and one called freight. And neither of those tags exist. So I'm just going to add them into this data set from the source data set. OK, let's give it a go. So now it just asks me to confirm if I want to continue. I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to insert transport underneath the demand branch. And now it's trying to do the import operation. OK, it's finished and it's given us a summary of that import operation. It says it's imported 323 expressions. It's added a scenario called CNG buses and it's mapped the reference scenario to the baseline scenario. It's also mapped some of the fuels and it's added two tags of passenger and freight. And once we finish that, you should see there's a new set of branches in this data set which have been imported from that older data set for these transport branches. So you can see it's not just imported the transport branch, but it's imported all the ones below it. And it's also imported the expressions for those. And it's also mapped the expressions from the reference scenario in the source data set to the current baseline scenario in this data set. So that's importing branches from another area as a way of merging different data sets. So there you are. There's four different techniques for importing and exporting data uh, to and from Leap. We've looked at basic importing and exporting using copy and paste. We've looked at importing and exporting large data sets from template spreadsheet. We've looked at creating branches and importing data from a structured spreadsheet. And finally, we've looked at importing branches and data from another leap area as a way of merging areas. There are additional techniques. For example, you can make use of Leap's API to write your own scripts to do importing and exporting. But we can go into those in another video in the future, I hope. I hope you found this useful. Um, look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye for now.